I want to show a short video about TechSoup that was made available about a year ago. Mm. Yeah, just over a year ago, uh, September 2020. And uh, so we're going to hear from Rebecca. And I'm not sure how daring I want to be with pronouncing your last name. I'm going to have to look at it. Um, Masasak, or I'm not sure I've got the uh, accent or emphasis in the in the right spot. Uh, she's the CEO of TechSoup, and uh, I was looking for something short like that to uh, introduce to people. Then we're going to take a little poll and review our agenda see if anybody has any thoughts they'd like to share with us. Sheena, you're with us. Is that right? You could, you could say hi if you want. So uh, I'm going to say hi to you. Thank you for uh, coming out. And I'm going to get the video lined up here. So this is the video. Uh, let's give it about 30 more seconds. Uh, we've got Six of us are in the meeting here, and I'm just checking. Uh, I'm, we're expecting a guest speaker that I'm thinking is going to join us between, um, you know, about 3.45 and 4 o'clock Eastern time. And um, hopefully that's uh, still good with him. So um, looking at the time on my computer here, I've got 349, and I think it's been there about 50 seconds. So maybe it's just a few more seconds I want to keep uh, to our schedule here. And this video is short. It's just a bit over a minute and a half. Okay, so we could even show it twice, really. But let's uh, look at it the first time now. And uh, please respond in the chat if you cannot hear it. Uh, we did a test and we think you can, should be able to hear it. Okay, here we go. TechSoup is a network of international NGOs all working on a common mission. We look to use technology to help the community connect and develop innovative solutions so that we in general have a more equitable planet. TechSoup was founded in 1987 as a local Bay Area organization originally, and what was seen was really the social activists needing to deal with this new technology thing and the invention of the PC and so forth, and also the nerds of the world at the time really wanting to contribute but not really knowing how to connect, and so we actually originally started by trying to make those connections between people, which is still part of our mission. And over the course of time, we found that when we were helping local organizations, they often could make a plan for technology, but they couldn't get funding for it and they couldn't get the resources that they needed. And so we came up with some ideas for how to better provide services or to go to corporations and others who might be able to provide products. And we realized that we might be able to expand that to a broader set of products and services and use an e-commerce platform to do it. And TechSoup is nothing without the 100 corporations and 200 foundations and the partnerships we have with 70 NGOs around the world. We are always trying to help make it easier and, and have less friction for them to connect with offers and for the corporations to meet their philanthropic objectives for the programs. That is sort of, you know, the, the secret sauce in between. Hey, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. So did that come through okay? TechSoup is a Whoa. network of international... It did? Yes, it did. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lizzie. So it, uh, I know we have a small group on the on the call right now. And I think our, our guest speaker uh, joined us. Uh, so we might uh, be able to watch that again, or we might watch another uh, video uh, a bit later. But let me uh, go over what we're covering today. What we just saw was a short introductory overview video of TechSoup by their CEO, Rebecca Masasak. Um, is anyone on the call, if you would be willing to put 
in the chat. Uh, do you, are you a member of TechSoup? So I'm going to put, yes, uh, I am. Uh, is anybody else taking advantage? You, you, you can take advantage of some of the things with TechSoup without uh, being a member. Uh, and you can uh, take advantage of other things if you are. Uh, so you do need to be a, an organization, though, a, a nonprofit organization. And it could be just about anywhere in the world. So individuals uh, are not eligible to uh, become a member of TechSoup, but you can become a member as an individual through your organization. Okay, um, we uh, went through a little bit of a simple poll. I wanna do one more uh, pass at that. The, we got our warm up icebreaker with uh, using poll everywhere and texting a response on where people were located. And uh, we learned, I learned anyway, that you can put an emoji in the response. So if you'd like to participate, I'm going to change the question. I'm going to deactivate uh, this poll. And uh, Liz put the instructions in the chat. Uh, you also see them uh, on the top here where you send a text to 22333 with the phrase YTB Youth 147. You do not have to be concerned about upper or lowercase. Uh, and then that will allow you to participate. You can also participate by going to this web address, polyv.com forward slash YTBYouth147. Okay, I'm gonna change the question to, uh, to a question about digital inclusion. Now we're going to get some background on what digital inclusion is, uh, but let's uh, see what we end up with on this question, which is simply, uh, it's kind of a barometer for our meeting. I know we have a small group here. Uh, we had close to 20 people registered, so I'm not sure if every, and, and I believe all of the reminders went out. So on this one, if you uh, are uh, interested in participating, you can respond with A for we're on it. Uh, B for we're getting started doing something with it. Three, wish we, or I'm sorry, letter C, wish we knew what to do. And letter D, I have no idea what digital inclusion is, uh, but we're going to help you out with that. So I'm going to put uh, a response in there and I'm sending it to 22333. And I'm going to put my response in there. And let's see if it shows up. So Liz, uh, Lizzie, I know we were uh, practicing with it before. So let's see, is it, uh, oh, I have not opened it, my bad. I got it. That's why you have moderators, facilitators, and a team here. Uh, okay, so uh, I am going to uh, send up my vote again. Looks like we have a couple of other uh, People voting, all right. I got some getting started. Okay, so we definitely want to uh, provide some good ideas for the people who want ideas, who have no ideas, who wanna know what to do. And I think by the end of our session, we are, we're gonna make some headway on that. All right, so let me go back to, uh, to the agenda here. Any uh, comments, thoughts, uh, uh, or questions, or I just want to confirm that uh, we're in pretty good shape, and uh, and I'm asking uh, our uh, guest speaker uh, if this is a good time to. Uh, talk with us about, about uh, digital inclusion. Is, uh, is this good uh, for you, Andrew? Are you uh, 
do I have to unmute anybody? I'm gonna. Okay. Sorry, just my my video was muted, but it looks like uh, my mic can work. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm ready. Okay. All right. Really appreciate. I uh, want to introduce our uh, guest speaker here. Oh no, that is crazy. Uh, did you take over? No. Do I? I still have the. I don't know why it. So Liz, you see that, right? This is like. <laughs> yes, it's like a gray screen. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna move over uh, is, and put this up. Are you seeing? Uh, I see that. Okay. So um, yeah. So our guest speaker is Andrew Farrelly of Digital Inclusion Practitioners of New Jersey, and you can see uh, the logo for that organization. And he's going to fill us in on what digital inclusion is. And I put some links on the, um, Liz, is there a way to put, it's just, it's a short document here. Is there a way to put it into the chat? And if not. Yes, uh, it's the one that you sent via email earlier, right? That's correct. Yes. I'll put it in the chat. Yep. Okay. So anybody who would like to uh, explore any of those links. But at this time, uh, Andrew, would you like to take over the screen share? I'll do it. I'll stop. Is that? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right, Andrew, the floor is yours to uh, fill us in. Just confirming you can see the slides? Yes, looks great. Great. Um, and okay. my apologies, my internet has been out for actually over a week at this point. So I am in a, in a public space. So please excuse the, the background noise. Gosh, thank you. Thank you for the ex, extra effort. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So yes, my name is Andrew Farrelly and I'm chair of an organization called uh, Digital Inclusion Practitioners of New Jersey or DIP and J for short. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna talk, uh, talk to you today about what digital inclusion is. And uh, you can visit us at dipnj.org um, either now or later. But um, yeah, so I wanted to start off with a few uh, definitions to get us started. And has anyone heard of the digital divide before? Uh, please feel free to unmute and or throw something in the chat if you'd like. Yes. I, yes, yes, for I, me I as think. well. I think. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have an idea of, of what the digital divide intends? Oops. It, it's, an, it's, it's when um, certain population doesn't have access to the internet web on a wide span, I guess. You just don't have the equipment or the resources. So That's a, you, sorry, go ahead. Mostly students, you know, um, in the social economic deprived areas, or it's just a, it's a money thing where you can't afford to... Um, broadband. That's a, that's a really good, uh, good definition. Uh, although I would push back on the idea of it just being students. Uh, the official definition or a, a official definition is the economic, educational, and social inequalities between those who have A, digital devices, B, easy and regular online access, and C, the requisite skills and resources to take full advantage of those first two elements and those who do not. So I think you were spot on about uh, the the not having access to the internet uh, or devices, as you, as you pointed out. Uh, but the, another component is also the digital literacy aspect, which brings us to the next definition. Does anyone know what digital literacy is? Well, I, I got uh, some education on it uh, through badger.com. And I'll say a little more about that later, but it's, it's knowing, uh, I think, uh, how to protect yourself from spam, how to uh, know if you're looking at legitimate information, how to, you know, do some of the basics of cybersecurity and antivirus software. Hope I'm in the ballpark with some of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all those things would be counted as digital literacy. Um, the, the definition that we use, I think is developed by the American Library Association, but they say it's the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information, uh, requiring both cognitive and technical skills. So it's, yeah, 
not not just the ability to notice when something is spam or phishing, as you noted, Jerome, but also what to do about it. Right? It's the ability yeah. to navigate online or even even just a uh, your phone. Right? All these things would be included within digital literacy. I, I just like to say I have a lot of great neighbors, but if I could add one more, I'd I'd wish a librarian was my neighbor because I think they are invaluable. Yeah. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, the third one, digital equity. Has anyone heard of that or have a guess of what that might be? Is it the same as digital divide or is it different? It's related. It's certainly related. Related. Well, I think a lot of us are concerned about equities in general. So is that you know, fair and impartial and opportunity to benefit? Like is, 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 is digital inclusion a human right? Is it something to do with that? Uh, well, at this point, I, I, don't, I don't actually, uh, access to information and, and things around that, I believe actually is considered human right by the UN. Um, the term digital inclusion itself, I don't believe is, is uh -huh. included in that definition, but digital equity, I think you were, you were um, getting close, is right, it's, it's, it's that condition in which all individuals and communities have the access to all these technologies, right? All these things that are ultimately needed for participating in society, democracy, the economy, things like that. And uh, that's, that's where we wanna get. It's, it's not something yeah. that we currently have. And so this all brings us to the big one, digital inclusion. And I, I, I could, uh, we could throw out some ideas. Actually, I do that later on, so I'm, I'm gonna skip that for now. But um, there is an official definition of the term digital inclusion, and there are sort of um, less, less, uh, less intense versions. There, there, there's less, I think, serious versions of uh, how people define digital inclusion. Um, some people, when they say digital inclusion, they just mean digital literacy, or they just mean um, they're using it interchangeably with the digital divide. Again, all these things are related, but uh, digital inclusion has a definition set out by the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, sort of the, the big organization working on this issue in the US. And they say that there are five elements. Um, oh, sorry, one thing that I forgot to mention, there is a slightly more defined definition where people refer sometimes refer to the three leg stool of digital inclusion. And it's gonna be these first three elements. Uh, again, the National Digital Inclusion Alliance just adds two more. So the first element is affordable, robust broadband internet service. And the affordable and the robust part are both incredibly important here. Affordable, obviously if, if, if it's um, too much work to be able to afford the internet uh, or if it's, if it's just un, uh, you're, you're not a person's not able to uh, pay for this thing that is, that is so crucial to participation in, in uh, a modern life, then you're just, you, you won't be able to do it, right? You won't, you won't have it. And that leads to a whole bunch of issues. Robust, I think is the part that people, a lot of people forget. Um, it's not sufficient to have, like technically have access to the internet. Uh, it has to be strong enough for your uses, right? If you need to, uh, if you have several people using the same, uh, several people on the same internet uh, at the same time, maybe a few kids doing classes online and you're also working online, you're going to have to have more powerful internet than if it's just one person occasionally checking email. Right? So is that bandwidth then, or, or what's, uh, is that another way to think about it? Uh, bandwidth you're... is exactly, uh, yeah, broadband and, and speeds, right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 bandwidth and, and, and speeds, yeah. Uh, the second is internet enabled devices that meet the needs of the user. Again, it has to be a sufficiently powerful device. So, and that could be different for different people, right? And it also depends on the needs of the user. So if all you want to do is maybe uh, FaceTime with, with friends or, or Zoom with friends or send emails, Maybe, maybe a, a phone, a mobile phone is sufficient. Uh, but if you are working from the computer, if you are doing school on a computer, then a 
stronger device, one that enables you to be both on, say, Zoom and have some other resource heavy app running in the background at the same time. Um, both of those things would, would have to exist, right? And so it, it depends on needs of the user. The third is access to digital literacy training. Um, again, if, you, if you're not able to uh, ultimately navigate the internet or your digital device, then it's not as much of use or if any use at all. Um, but really having access to that digital literacy training is important because uh, as we all know, apps change over time, right? What, what you have to do online and what is necessary and how to navigate the internet, it changes uh, as technology grows. So those first three ones are what people mean when they say the three the three legged stool of digital inclusion. Um, these next two ones I think are also incredibly important. Uh, quality technical support. If the, the the nature of technology is it sometimes breaks or you're not sure why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, having a trusted person who's easy to access to help you troubleshoot, to help you fix your device, whatever. Um, without that. Again, the other three don't really matter. And finally, uh, applications and online content designed to enable and encourage self-sufficiency, participation, and collaboration. And so this means the, the content that is ultimately being accessed uh, has to be right for the user. So if it's, it, and maybe that means uh, it's age appropriate. Maybe that means if you have uh, visual difficulties, you have the ability to to change contrast on a website or enlarge the font, um, sort of things like that. There are two more notes that the National Digital Inclusion Alliance uh, adds to this definition. They say that digital inclusion also must evolve as technology advances. So what is sufficient today might not be sufficient in two years time, right? Uh, if everyone, if you know, 20 years ago, uh, a, sending email was something you could not do. At this point, it's not something that you can get around doing. So as technology advances and, and as it becomes more and more part of everyday life, digital inclusion must adapt to that. And finally, it requires intentional strategies and investments to reduce and eliminate historical, institutional, and structural barriers to access, uh, to access and use technology. And so it's not really sufficient. We're not really going to close the digital divide just by saying, OK, now um, we're start, starting now, we're all set, right? You, we have to go back. We have to fix these historical inequalities that have existed and the effects of them uh, in order to get to that point of digital equity. But like I said before, I was going to open up the floor again to talk about what, what does digital inclusion actually mean, right? We have this definition, these, these five elements and these two notes, but what does it mean to, in like, in normal people words, right? And uh, what does it mean to the yeah. everyday person? Like to me, if, if I could uh, comment here is that you can keep up with everybody else or the, you know, the pace of technology influence in our life that, you know, if you're a student, you, you have to have uh, access to, like I'm, I'm saying technology kind of interchangeable with digital, but you know, whether it's, you know, computer, laptop, uh, tablet, but you have to have that and you have to be able to use it to do your work, to be able to get a job, to be able to complete your courses. So it's kind of like a, a utility, like water and electricity power. I'm surprised that power isn't in there. I mean, I know it's obvious. You have to be able to charge your devices or have, you know, battery power or electrical power uh, as well. I mean, maybe that's assumed with it. But yeah, so that's that's kind of my take on what digital inclusion means. I think the 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 note about power would be um, definitionally included within the robust broadband and or the robust uh, okay. uh, technology itself, like yeah. the usable technology. But yeah, what, what about uh, data? 
literacy is that part of digital literacy like because there's so much where we need to have an understanding of well i guess that's in the literacy of interpreting uh information uh maybe that's it's included in there yeah, yeah. so th these are these are all good uh thoughts and ideas uh, media literacy would be included in in digital literacy as well so are there any other any other thoughts yeah i was thinking um gosh if you want to do video editing you definitely uh have to have some uh, powerful equipment for that yeah yeah so i mean it's drum you were you were all your examples absolutely fit into digital inclusion right you mentioned schoolwork and i heard that before it could be things like uh low or no fee banking uh where you don't have to go to a brick and mortar store to uh you know cash your paycheck right you don't have to uh stand online but you also if, if, if you're not banked or you're you're uh, not sufficiently banked, um, you you don't have to go to a, a check cashing place. Um, it can be digital inclusion means connecting with loved ones. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we all did that over the course of the pandemic, um, talking to someone who lived across the country who was, who was important to you. Um, it's public transportation. My my bus pass my, um, is is online. I can buy it in bulk quite easily instead of again having to wait online. Um, it's accessing services, uh, government services. Um, again, all these uh, these private services that we mentioned. It's healthcare. It's media literacy, like you mentioned, Jerome, online learning. It's sort of everything, right? And that's where we're all going with this in, in in 2021 and and for quite a long time at this point many many things have been either entirely digital or or moving in that direction and that's why digital literacy is so important and so what can be done about this um what's well, this it's this sort of thing it's it's raising awareness of what digital inclusion really is and how it touches on everything such that when we understand the issue as um, as having such a wide scope and having such huge implications for our neighbors, we can make better and more equitable decisions such that tomorrow, hopefully we can be a little more equitable and, 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 and so on and so forth. But as we do that, we really need to consider those five elements of digital inclusion and not uh, focus solely on say digital literacy um, or, uh, just that internet aspect or or tech support. It does have to be the whole package, um, not necessarily something that you have to offer all yourself, but trying to build that, trying to build um, all of that together, right? And so I have some uh, final resources. Um, the National Digital Inclusion Alliance is that organization that I uh, noted a few times earlier. You can find them at digitalinclusion.org. Um, there's an organization called N10 at n10.org, and they have a digital inclusion fellowship. I did this back in 2018. And throughout, a, throughout the year, you spend, they support you as you build out a digital inclusion initiative with your organization. Um, and I believe that they just started um, this year's cohort, so it would have to be for 2022 but uh, something to keep in mind. And finally, there's DipNJ, um, that, that's me, and you can find us at dipnj.org. Jerome, I see you speaking, but you're muted. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, what I wanted to ask is you mentioned N10. Um, I learned about N10 through TechSoup and I, I see, I view TechSoup as also, uh, you know, being somewhat of a resource. I don't know, they're not specifically, I, I don't know, maybe how you interpret it. Do you, uh, is your organization or where you work uh, a member of TechSoup or do you? So my, my day job, yes, uh, uh -huh. is a member of TechSoup, yes. Yeah. There's a question that came in. It was direct to me about whether we can get a copy of your presentation slides. Is that yep. is that That's something you could share? 
or, uh, or put a link in. Uh, so thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. So I'm going to, uh, was there anything else you had or, or was that, uh, did you have uh, get through the slides you wanted to uh, share with us? Those are all the slides. Um, I know yeah. that you had a few other things yeah. you wanted to touch on. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go back to, to the screen share and let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, let's see, move something out of the way and get my, uh, put this back over here. Okay, now, and I'm going to, okay, so is my screen share coming up okay? Yep. All right. All right, so I'm just going to go into, uh, full screen mode here and uh, step down. So some of the, uh, okay, so we are going to, uh, Andrew, somehow you're going to get us a, a link or a copy that we could put in the, in the chat or email to people. Is that, uh, yes, I can do that. I, you can do that right now or. Uh, yeah, I can, I can turn it into PDF and email it to you. Okay. That works. Yeah. Or, um, Sure. Okay. Um, so some of the links that Andrew was talking about, I've also put in the, the session slides and Liz put a link to those. So you'll have some of them uh, here and momentarily or by the end of our session, I think we'll have a way to put a link into uh, the chat with the slides that Andrew uh, talked us through and the, the websites for the organization that he leads, Digital Inclusion Practitioners in New Jersey, I'm a member, uh, is shown here. And what is digital inclusion? That's also a very nice summary. Um, and also from the uh, national uh, national digital inclusion organization. Uh, there's a link here with definitions, so you could take advantage of that. And one of the other things that we wanted to share with you was something I learned about last week was National Digital Inclusion Week. Is that right, Andrew? Um, are you? Yes, uh, that's correct. Yeah. So, uh, so please stay uh, unmuted. Uh, what I want to do is show. Uh, I want to do two things here. I want to show a, a very interesting uh, web platform called Spatial Chat, which I learned about last week, and then I want to show you a screening form that I just put together as a demonstration. It's nothing official, but it uses some of the tools that are freely available that you might find useful for the other parts of your work. Okay, so let's see if uh, the uh, everything cooperates here. If I'm trying to, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll go back out. All right, and... I'm launching spatial chat and I'm going to ask, uh, I hope I get through. How, how's that going so far, Andrew? Is, I think yep. this is what, uh, so if you could, uh, this is, I, I don't know what it would be called, a simulation or a replica of what you used last week. Uh, so please, uh, I'm passing the baton to you to, uh, to tell me how to navigate or scroll and how uh, this platform is useful for the symposium you ran last last week. Sure. Yeah, so last week we had our, during a digital inclusion week, which is a, a, a national, uh, a national effort to, uh, to, to, to talk about digital inclusion for at least a week, um, we had our annual symposium. And one of the things that we did during the event was have 
so we wanted to make sure there was more more like an in-person conference than uh, a Zoom session might be. And so we use this platform called Spatial Chat, which is right here. And if you'll notice in the bot, uh, bottom at this point, left part of the screen, there is that little J circle. Um, and that's Jerome's little avatar, if you will. Uh, he, because he's yeah. currently in, 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 in Zoom, it's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit difficult to show because it uses the same camera and, and same microphone, but typically you'd have a bunch of people in the same room at the same time. And depending on how proximate you are to them, you can uh, hear them or not hear them. So if you're right next to each other, oh. you both have your video going and you'd be able to do, uh, both hear each other. And then if you want to move to someone else and they wanted to go someplace else and talk to someone else, they could, they could do that by just dragging their, um, normally you would have your, your video and your face. Um, so it, it, it's pretty um, neat. People, people yeah, seem yeah. to enjoy that. Um, cause it gives you the freedom to walk around this room. Uh, Jerome, if you, if you scroll out or in, um, oh, see okay. the entire I, room like that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't try that. <laughs> yeah. And then if you scroll in, you can say over by Andrina, there's that, there's that paragraph you can scroll into there and oh, be able okay. to read it. Um, a brand okay. new 177 unit building located in William So Brooklyn. Jerome, as, as you're closer to that video, right, you can, you can hear the, the video as you would if, as if you were oh. walking to a TV screen. Oh, okay, okay. Wireless access That's very interesting. To their I got it. So if I move away, it gets quieter. Yep. It gets quieter. Okay. And then, so typically the same sort of thing would be happening, not just with videos, but with, uh, with people. Yeah. 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 So it, have you been working with spatial chat for a while, or is it just recently that you incorporated it in your, so in what you're doing, or do you use it at work Your your other work? The, the, uh, our vice chair, Michael Strom has been a big fan of spatial chat for a while. Um, he had a, he had a birthday party on it, uh, during the, during the height really? of the pandemic, uh, back in, uh, maybe June of 2020, which was, you know, kind of neat, uh, get a, get around the zoom fatigue a bit. Uh, this was the first time we had to, uh, this is the first time I, I had used it in any professional context. Um, but we we were quite happy with it and people seem to enjoy it there are some things to note it is a bit resource heavy uh yeah. for people's computers so for instance my my computer can't run both zoom and spatial chat at the same time okay um but it, it is depending on on the the amount of um, items you place in a room as you design it uh it that increases the strain on on um on the amount of bandwidth it takes up. So you would have fewer videos uh, in a sort of ideal world. Right. Can you tell me where my little avatar disappeared or did I do something? Oh, it's down here, I think. Oh, I see it. Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to move it out of there. Okay. Well, that's, um, I really appreciate learning about this and, uh, so Liz, talk with me uh, offline about where this might be useful for uh, for other things. Okay. Just a, anything. Go sorry, ahead. I just want to add a few more things. Yeah. Um, it works best in Chrome or Firefox, um, okay. and they don't recommend. They recommend that you use it on a computer and not a phone. So these are considerations just to take into account. Um, should you, should you want to use it for an event, um, just to give yeah. people warning. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. A conference, uh, that Liz and Lizzie and I were participating in, uh, at the same time of digital inclusion week it was also recommended. We were using socio app as a different kind of, I guess, platform but they also recommended chrome uh, as uh, and also using it in an in private or incognito mode to avoid some of the uh, i don't know pop-ups or um, other things where you need 
to give explicit permission for cookies or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So is it all right then? I'm going to uh, go back to uh, a couple of the uh, other things on the slides and connect it in with what we're talking about. Let me pull that up and um, go in and come down. Yeah, whoops. Okay, so uh, here's the links on spatial chat. I want to show you the uh, form I came up with uh, earlier in the day. And Liz, are you able to copy the link and put the screening form into the chat? Is that it seems like when I'm in full screen mode, it's a little trickier to do Let that. Let me go check. And, uh, but I'm, I'm going to click on it right now. And nope, that didn't work. Let me try it. Yeah, I guess I have to get out of full screen mode. And then if I press control, uh, it's going to come up to a screening form. Now, this, there is nothing official about this. I'm simply demonstrating a Microsoft uh, tool called Forms, Microsoft Forms, and that it was relatively easy. It's just two questions here. And um, I think I can uh, get a copy of that link since that worked. Let me it. see. You got it? Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know why it comes up so big or such like the long version. Uh, let me just for the heck of it, see if I can, can I, I'm going to copy I'm going to see if it comes out the same way that it did. So I got a slightly smaller version of it. Um, either one should work. So if, if you are willing, uh, Andrew, would you be a uh, <laughs> uh, uh, willing volunteer to, uh, or depending on what your uh, capacity is, where you are, or Lizzie or, or Liz or Sheena, or anyone who's, who's on the call with us, um, to try clicking on it. And it should uh, bring you to, you can do this, this would work nicely either on a mobile device, a phone, or uh, you know, obviously a tablet or a computer. And related to the nature of the work uh, that I know uh, Sheena and I and, and others uh, have been invested in, we've been trying different screening tools, or if you want to call them surveys or assessments or polls, you know, very, very simple, nothing uh, lengthy or complicated to get a sense, kind of like a check-in or a barometer, how are things going? Now, of course, you need some digital inclusion capacity to complete this, or if you're meeting with someone in the library or someone is working with you, maybe you can give responses to uh to them but uh i do appreciate that uh or if if you completed this on an index card or a paper form someone could transcribe it but it's also uh you know making the point that you need to have uh digital inclusion to to participate so I wanted to have a way to remember the five, uh, what are they, categories of digital inclusion? Is that the right term, Andrew, or the characteristic? I, I say elements. I don't elements. know if it actually okay, is good. a uh, yeah, okay. actual word for it. I like that, the five elements. So I just for my own memory device, I, I was trying to make a word out of it, but or an acronym, so I came up with IDATS for Internet Device Apps Training and Support. That's really a, an abbreviated version of it. So, uh, okay, so, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna put in uh, 
just so that you can see the response uh, for the visual that can be created, I'm going to put in TechSoup because that's not anybody's name, so we should be able to pick it out. And uh, so far for our meeting today, I think it's been going great. A pretty good device. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Might need a little help with training, and and that's what Andrew is providing on spatial chat, and occasionally. Uh, uh, just so that I exercise the form and I pick something in each uh, element, or well, these are the five elements, and these I came up with four, these four categories, uh, and then I'm going to submit it. Okay. So, all right. So, what happens next? Um, I'm going to go over to a tool that I also use that's freely available from Microsoft called uh, Power BI. And I'm going to refresh the data and fingers crossed, hopefully my, uh, uh, did it come in? Is TechSoup in there? Paul, thank you for whoever uh, submitted that one. Uh, it, it should come in pretty much real time. I'm going to do a refresh once more. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing tech soup in here. Did anyone? It, okay. it's, it's there. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I've, okay. And I could actually go down to the minutes and seconds here. Uh, and, and I just have the date, but the data has time and everything. And these measures up here are, are telling us um, how many responses came in and how many people are participating. I was doing some testing, so uh, that was, and I also had my dogs participating, that's Lacey and Lucy, so they were really cooperating uh, as we were getting ready. And then if you, uh, go over to the, whoops, let me get back to, no, that's, is that mine or yours? Uh, I'm getting a little confused here. Let me go back up, uh, back up here. There's a visual display of responses. Now, obviously I was showing you a visual display, but I uh, am shared this out to the web so that you don't need my desktop software. Now, what you can see is on this one, I don't have all of the responses loaded because I did not uh, set it up to do a real-time refresh uh, on the free version. I can set it up to do a refresh, uh, I think every hour, uh, which since uh, that that's probably sufficient for a lot of things. Uh, I'm working on, or uh, if I'm working uh, back at the desktop, uh, if I publish it and uh, save my changes, then we could take a look at it. And you can also, since you have access to the slides, you can also interact with the uh, the version that has been made available uh, on the web. So I'm going to go up there. Is this coming through uh, the screen share? Is that so? Here's what it looks like. But actually, I want you to see it the way you would see it. On uh, so let let me go back here, and and this is more like what how you how it would appear to you. And if it should refresh, fingers crossed again, mm, not sure why it might be uh, uh, some latency on this, um, but uh, I don't wanna get caught up in that. Let me go back to uh, the version that I published and uh, where did that one go? Here it is. Okay. So what you can do if, if you were using a tool like this, and, and the question might be, okay, who needs 
training. So if you click on that, it would tell you that my dog, who's Beagle, Lucy, she, she's telling you, and uh, it was me uh, who was the tester, and I also need some help with that. And who needs internet? Uh, Lacey, that's our other dog. Uh, she's also a Beagle. And who needs support? Uh, you could those people need support. There's a parent out there, and, and those are the other people who need support. Okay. Any questions on that? Is that possibly something you might find, uh, find useful? Um, the other thing I wanted to show uh, was something I learned about this summer uh, with from this uh, website called badger.com. Uh, is that something you've come across, uh, Andrew? Or uh, no, I'm unfamiliar. Yeah, so it, it's it's very very useful, uh, and it's part of something called New World of Work. Um, and you and this this could be for anybody. Uh, the work that I'm involved with, uh, along with uh, some others who are on our session, is with youth and young adults, and uh, you know, could be high school, college, or again, any any age. There, it's not age restricted. So you could see here, new world of work. Uh, that is also, I guess, that's the platform site, and it's got some. Uh, it's, it's a pretty incredible resource that, uh, so as you can see, it uh, encourages people to self-educate or it could be something that a person could complete and put on a LinkedIn profile or their resume as a way of demonstrating uh, their capabilities and knowledge in different areas. And organizations can also create their own badges for things that they might want their employees to know about and connecting in with the, um, you know, digital inclusion. If there are activities or action items that a person can go through to demonstrate uh, that they are at least have a working familiarity with cybersecurity or how to safely navigate the internet or um, interpret information uh, and maybe the libraries have put together things like that you can go through and you can watch like on this um, web link let me uh, just pull this one out and post it in the chat so if you wanted to you can create an account on badger.com and if these are probably, I think it took me about 25 minutes, you watch a video uh, and the videos are, I think within five minutes each, something like that. And then you answer these questions. And if you get, I don't know, seven or eight out of 10, I think there's 10 questions. So it covers, uh, well, there's an introduction, collaboration, uh, ethics and innovation, I, I guess, in the context of digital literacy, uh, some, you know, fundamentals on social media and um, utilizing technological advances, that one. So searching for information and uh, and then you go down through the uh, 10 questions, submit your form. And if you, and you have a chance, if you uh, did not get uh, certain parts of it correctly, it will point you back to which video to review. You can retake it. And then if you complete it successfully, you can earn um, a badge. And you can do that for many, many things. So what's everybody's uh, thoughts on that? Any, yay, that's great. Uh, wow, this is what the 
definitely want to try this. Anyone? Uh, sounds good. All right, that's what I was looking for. Thank you, uh, thank you for that. Yeah. So, um, and just I'm not going to spend uh, much time on this, but the links are in here. If you don't know about these resources, they're pretty valuable and, and useful. Uh, uh, this is also from Microsoft uh, virtual workshops and trainings, and they have it categorized uh, for students and families, business and professionals, uh, uh, educators and learning institutions. And uh, if you click on that, you can, you know, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about Power BI, Excel, LinkedIn, um, you can you can do that. Uh, the next one I have is which we've been thinking about if we can get enough interest of running Hour of Code. Now the attractive thing about Hour of Code is that they literally have something that runs for an hour where you can learn uh, a bit about coding uh, uh, if you if you want to fill out your uh, that would be digital literacy or training element within digital inclusion. And the sentiment uh, I've heard about this is that, you know, when I was going through uh, grade school, it was reading, writing, and arithmetic, and now it's reading, writing, arithmetic, and coding, and probably some other things. Uh, so this is a pretty cool movement, and you can learn more about it if you uh, have an interest. Power apps for kids. I think I might try this. <laughs> I'm going to claim I'm a kid again and learn how to do something with power apps. Uh, so you can explore that as you like. And I put a link to a Google Drive. And if Andrew, if you tell me you've sent me something and if it's okay with you, I could add it to this TechSoup Connect for Time Banking Organizations Google Drive. If you click on there, you'll see that I put a, uh, a training catalog from Microsoft. There's an infographic that I downloaded from the National Digital Inclusion website. You could also, of course, find it there. Uh, there was an article that, or a research paper actually, on the digital divide, which I was amazed that and happy to hear that uh, there's some serious uh, work going on to uh, give us some uh, suggestions, I assume. Uh, I just had a looked through it briefly. I want to spend a little more time with that. But you would have access uh, to uh, these resources if you like. OK, so they're on there. And uh, what I put here on this last slide, and maybe I'll, I'll leave this as our last discussion question, and certainly happy for anyone who has a thought or comment or question. And again, want to thank Andrew for his time. And, uh, and the ingenuity of finding some, uh, some space where you are able to uh, join us, uh, that's fantastic to have your uh, involvement. So thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, Thanks for having this, me. Yeah, this, and, and like I said, I'm a member. I want to talk about the, the last two questions uh, is, and maybe we'll just break it down to one. Uh, because I've broached this before about data. So Andrew, I'm gonna leave it to you to make the choice. Either tell us your thoughts on data, uh, you know, data capability with, within the realm of digital literacy, or if you would talk with us about what a digital navigator, is that a, what is that? Is that, I, is that a term that's used throughout the world, throughout the country? What does it mean? Yeah, I could, I could, I could hit on both, uh, although I'm not quite sure I understand the, the first question. Uh, well, is, let, is let me just clarify that. Yeah, um, 
I've been, uh, what shall I say, swimming in circles with uh, a very, I want to mean that as a very affectionate complimentary way with, especially the conference I was at last week, uh, where there are world experts in this field of precision analytics, machine learning, uh, some people use the term predictive analytics, data analysis, data science. And, uh, you know, there's a joke some people might make of, you know, you learn the quadratic equation and was that algebra in ninth grade and ask how often have people had to use that? Actually, I had, I, I just kind of used it with baseball of how you figure out the distance between uh, the home plate and second base. <laughs> the quadratic equation actually came in handy there. But other math that comes in handy is statistics. And it's almost like reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, coding, and statistics. Um, because with so much going on in the world today with decision making and how numbers are thrown around, uh, that's why I kind of think of, I know that statistics itself existed before we had, you know, high powered smartphones and all that, but um, it seems like that's a skill that is uh, in turn, you know, kind of tied in with information literacy and uh, knowing how to sift through all of these searches we're doing and um, and how to uh, like what to believe. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, extremely astute, right? It, it, is, it is part of media literacy um, and, and therefore digital literacy. But I, I think having a understanding of statistical methods is only, it, it's as useful as, as you need it to be. Um, but I think there is a lot of value to being able to see through the ways in which statistics be used to tell stories either for good or for bad um, and being able to see where information is being left out when someone tells you that the statistic means whatever um, like building up that skill is, is is something that i think is tremendously useful and i would argue as a part of media literacy um, yeah. But you know the 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 deep statistics um, that 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 can be done. I, I don't know that everyone needs to be a statistician. Um, I think. Well, yeah, no, I'm just like one of the things that come up, and then I'm going to ask you to close us out on Digital Navigator is having an appreciation for the difference between the average value and the range, because that that's pretty basic, accessible stuff, and that even amongst relatively well-educated adults. I mean, there's stories about how companies have designed things for the average person. And then after some user experience, there is no average person. The average person is either taller, shorter, older, younger, heavier, lighter, and it didn't work with just understanding things as, well, let's just go with the average. Um, so even that type of, uh, you know, just really basic uh, data and statistics. I'm not talking about, you know, graduate level courses or anything. Um, but if you would please uh, fill us in as our last question, unless others have uh, something to add, talk to us about, because we want to leave knowing what can we do if we want to advance the cause and, of digital inclusion? What's a digital navigator? And what are your thoughts or, or examples or suggestions about what, what do people throughout the country do who are 
devoted to the work of digital inclusion? How are they helping their communities? What can the average person do? So the Digital Navigator Program is an initiative put on by the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. And what a, a digital navigator is, is a trusted person in the community that any person can go to and ask either questions around how to, how to do, a, do a task, a digital task, um, or it's helping someone navigate the, the labyrinth that sometimes is signing up for internet or uh, getting uh, maybe a low cost internet service. So for instance, Comcast has something called internet essentials, where if you qualify, if you have someone in your household who qualifies for uh, free or subsidized lunch, um, you and Comcast exists in your in your um, uh, 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 serv services your neighborhood, uh, you can get uh, relatively good internet for I believe it's ten dollars a month. It might be fifteen. I, I, I don't quite remember. Um, so that that could be something that a digital navigator could do. Um, the, these are people who tend to be um, employed at a community-based organization, but they of course can also be uh, volunteers. And but the idea is to have some central location, a physical location where people can show up, and um, that person can help them troubleshoot their digital inclusion issue. Thank um, you. Is, am I uh, screen sharing the right uh, information then yep. consistent what you're talking about? And I put this link in the chat. Uh, so it sounds like a digital navigator, as you said, is a guide or a coach. Uh, you know, someone who sort of like a mentor or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the the um the extent of the relationship can can grow over time um and it might just be a relationship with the organization maybe uh your client trusts your organization and they don't necessarily know the person who's the digital navigator but uh by proxy of being um a part of that organization there, there's some inherent trust but the idea is to have a easy access for um this sort of troubleshooting is there, sense? yeah, is there like a checklist of knowledge and understanding that you'd like someone uh, to have or like to, before they would offer themselves to, uh, I don't know, the community or the members of an organization or like, is there a certain... Uh, this is uh, this is getting a bit beyond my my knowledge. Um, I know um, the you can always reach out to NDIA, and mm -hmm. if you scroll down, I think there might actually be um, some resources, some links at the bottom about um, how to. Yeah, there you okay. go. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. How to learn more? But. Okay. Okay. Oh, very good. Yeah, I see this. I mean, this is you know the other side of the equation like uh but there you go there's that skill assessment and uh however you do it paper online uh an infographic oh i'm going to explore this a little bit more afterwards oh this is very yeah very uh interested in this um and i know an organization where uh, I, I don't know if they're using this term but they're uh getting uh, students uh, involved with being, I don't know, uh, technology resources within their schools, even to help teachers with some of the technology issues that come up during the day, I guess, with presentations or meetings or using equipment. And that's kind of like a digital navigator within the school, some schools. So uh, exactly. Yeah, I, I think you can and you can set I think the scope, I think the idea is to set the scope uh, to whoever your constituents are. So if it's within a school, then that makes sense. And or if it's a library, then it's, you know, the patrons of the library, you know, 
sure. anything. Sure. All right. Well, that's definitely a high note, and that's a, a good note to close out. I, I noticed that one of the people just had to leave, um, and I'm going to one last call. Is um, anybody have any any final question? Uh, Andrew, did you did you have an opportunity for? Uh, did you were you able to send me a file that I could? I, upload. I should have emailed it. Uh, it should have gone through when we were talking about it earlier, but I can send it again. Okay. It... Yeah. I, yeah, I just didn't check yet. Let me, uh, let me see what I've got, uh, uh, in here and, oh, cause I shut down my email, so I wouldn't. Yeah. So let me just, uh, and I think, uh, it came through like a PDF or something like that. Okay, I see it, I see it, okay. And uh, so I'm going to download it. All right, and I wanna see if I could put it into the, okay, October, 2021. I wanna go over to, uh, all right, so the last, part here I'm going to this is a share drive that I set up and Liz are you able to put the link to the share drive one more time in uh, in the chat and if not I'll uh, let's see where am I going here and did I where did I did I put it in downloads where did it go No, I thought I put it in, let's try it one more time. Okay, so here's the file. I am going to save it into, oh, it is there. So how come when I looked for it right here, the file upload, go in here and there it is okay all right so it should be uh, available to people and i'm just going to go up to yeah it was this one. Oh boy that's a uh can I copy that? That's what I'm trying to do. Copy the link. Okay. And I'm gonna run out of time here. Where is my chat? Um, chat and paste. Okay. Oh boy, just made it five o'clock. Oh, uh, drum, drum, you just yeah, said that yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Uh, let's see, is it still five o'clock? Uh, 501. Okay, I think that went out to everyone. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Have a good evening. And I look forward to continuing uh, to participate with DIP and J. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, Jerome. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Good night, everybody. Bye bye.